Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, May 24th, 2019. And here are some of today's trends in the news on the market front. Over there in Asia, only Nikkei's down a little bit. Everybody else is up. Over there in Europe, it's up. Here in the States, it's up. And oil, eh, it's up too. Gold down a little bit, but Bitcoin's bouncing back. Dow Post, fifth straight negative week. Longest losing streak since 2011. What does this mean? Well, go to your Trends Journal and you'll know what it means. Trend forecast, Trump bump or market slump? The next recession. That's right. Where, when, and how. But here's what they say. Stocks notched weekly losses on Friday as investors worried. You know what they worried about. The U.S.-China trade war. They've been saying this crap for three years. And just for the record, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ hit new highs less than a month ago. So... It wasn't trade wars for three years. It's not what's going on. It's a global slowdown as detailed in your Trends Journal. U.S. Durable Good Orders dropped 2.1% last month. And it was a buildup of inventories. And the IHS market said Thursday that U.S. manufacturing activity fell to a nine-year low. Remember, they exported all our jobs to these cheap labor companies, and that's why only about 12% of U.S. GDP is manufacturing-based. Yeah, they sold us out. Gold, eh, it's up a little bit. It had a decent week, but why gold went up a little bit this week is because the dollar went down a little bit, but the dollar is still at a two-year high. So even as things are stinking over here, as most people's incomes aren't going higher, the economy is moving up a little bit, the dollar is stronger because so many other economies are so weak. So the stronger the dollar goes, the weaker Gold prices goes because of the opportunity cost of holding gold. And oil prices. Well, they bounced back from yesterday's big decline, but not a lot. And the reason being is that, well, there's more oil than people are buying. Do you know the United States is now the world's largest oil producer? That's right. It wasn't supposed to happen until about 2022. And here we are in 2019. We're producing more oil than Saudi Arabia and Russia. So, depends on where the economy is going and what happens in that Middle East. If war breaks out, then of course oil prices are going up. And if war breaks out, you go to your Trends Journal to see what's going to break out, when, where, why, and how. Middle East war drums beating louder, one of our big stories. And another one, regime change in Venezuela made in USA. So figure it out. You think they're there because ah, Venezuela has the world's uh, largest oil reserves and Iran's one of the Middle East's largest oil producers and they sit on a lot of reserves too. No, it's their broccoli crop. Same reason why we invaded Iraq and destroyed Libya. Had nothing to do with oil. It had to bring freedom and democracy to the countries. Yep. New home sales fell in April by 6.9% here in the U.S. Manhattan home prices fell in April, the most in a decade. And the reason being, interest rates. That's right, but now they're going down. As I reported yesterday, mortgage refinances surged 8% as rates fall. Yeah, so... What we're saying is they're going to lower interest rates as the economy slows down and there's a global slowdown. We've been saying this since January, and now others are just catching up with us. 
you're going to see a 30-year mortgage, which is now around 4.4%, we say under 4. Before the Presidential Reality Show ends in November 2020. U.S. core capital goods orders tumble. Shipments are flat. Again, the data is there. The Mexican economy contracted in the first quarter from the end of last year. Gross domestic product fell 0.2%. Okay, why? You got to blame it on China. No, it's a global slowdown. And all the wealth has been accumulated on the top. And all of us people, the workers on the plantations of Slavelandia, don't have dough to spend. And that's a fact, Jack. Oh, got to be proper. And Jill. I don't want to be, you know, accused of identity politics. Speaking of which, hey, that uh, Theresa May over there. That's right. Maybe she's gone. Yes, she is. She resigned. End of May, Theresa May resigns and finally admits defeat after Brexit shambles, insisting, I've done my best. You done crap. You were a loser from the beginning. You're just like the rest of the jerks. Oh, if only a woman were in charge. Men, women, black, white, creed, race, color, doesn't matter. Morons, lowlifes, scumbags, intellectuals. People of high morality, they come in all of them. So I'm tired of this identity politics. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. It's a bullshit alert. How come, hey, you had a woman in there? How come she didn't do so great? If only a woman was in charge. Oh, how about Margaret Thatcher, the one, yeah, remember her? How about that psycho? Oh, I forgot about Hillary Clinton. What about Condoleezza Rice? Oh, you may mean Susan Rice. Yeah, Rice, yep. One loser after another. Oh, Samantha Power, forgot her. Oh, Janet Yellen. Why am I yelling? Again, I'm tired of this identity politics. It doesn't make a difference who's in office, where they come from, it's who they are. Only morons and imbeciles believe this crap that you have to have a certain gender or a certain color in office. Hey, wasn't Barack Obama? Oh, well, he was only half black. Yeah, but a full low-life piece of garbage, a Nobel piece of crap prize winner. Yeah, war after war. Libya, you loved it, didn't you? I'm really good at killing people, all those drone strikes. Anyway, moving on. What else do we have here? Ah, Julian Assange faces 170 years in prison as U.S. adds charges under Espionage Act. The only person that came out, or one of the only people, that really came out hard against this, of all those little flunkies running in the presidential reality show, is Tulsi Gabbard. And Bernie Sanders came out with some more bullshit Bernie's line today, you know, about this. But he's been mostly silent on it. And while the scumbags, the low lives, who rob us of the trillions of dollars and the mass murderers, politicians who lie us into war, you know, as banksters and politicians, the bloods and the crips that the morons and imbeciles call the Democrats and Republicans, the thieves and murderers, they get away with murder. But hey, Julian Assange, he put out information over there that shows what a criminal operation we got over here. So put the guy in jail. Freedom of the speech, forget about it. It's one of your top trends of 2019, censorship 2019, and it's going to only get worse. Oh, here's something that's not reported by the prostitute media. And again, the media, rest in peace. Big story in your Trends Journal by our CEO, Derek Osinenko, who is a top guy in the field, in that old-fashioned field of the media, writing about how it's gone so low and going to get lower. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal at trendsjournal.com because you get the real news you can use gives you facts and information of the current events forming future trends to help you chart the future. So, news that you don't get. A pair of airstrikes in southern Afghanistan by the United States and its allies 
killed only 14 civilians, including five women and seven children. Not a peep from the prostitutes. Bravo, America. We're really tough over there. We're bringing freedom and democracy, spending trillions to kill millions. Speaking of which, as I say, the business of America is war. The business of China is business. A new floating bullet train capable of hitting speeds of 372 miles an hour. 372 miles an hour is one step closer to reality in China. On Thursday, yesterday, a prototype of the country's largest high-speed magnetic lev train rolled off the assembly line and it's scheduled to go into production in 2021. Here in the USSA, Murder Incorporated, scores of trillions wasted and spent on the military-industrial complex to kill millions, while our lousy, rotten infrastructure gets worse. Hey, take the subway in New York. It's a night in Calcutta. Yeah, we got the Excella in Amtrak that goes to grand total on average of 65 miles an hour compared to 372. Screw you. You're just a bunch of slaves in slave landia. Do as you're told and shut up. What else do we have over here? Well... U.S. plans more troops to the Middle East. Yeah, we have every right to be there, especially in Syria, a country that's not ours, done nothing to us, but we'll do what we want here because we're a bunch of sick son of a bitches. Oh, got to be proper. And daughters of bastards. What right do we have there? The Trump administration is planning to add several thousand additional troops to the Middle East. They just announced today another 1,500 of that. Now listen to this carefully. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Officials said the intelligence earlier this month indicated an imminent threat of an Iranian attack on U.S. or allied interests and Western allies. U.S. lawmakers and members of the U.S. intelligence community have questioned the administration's warning about Iran and suggested the dangers are being exaggerated. Ah, fake news. Exaggerated. Lying, low-life people. Exaggerated. How come you're not being banned by Facebook, Google, and Twitter, and all the rest of the censorship people? Because your lies are okay. Hey, remember Saddam Hussein at Weapons of Mass Destruction? I'm old enough to remember the Gulf of Tonkin incident that never happened. Hey, hey remember at the turn of the century? That's a century back past this one. Remember the main? One lie after another. Crazy, sick people as deranged as the guy that blows up the mosque in New Zealand or the crazy people that kill students in high schools and other places. Your world leaders are as deranged, demented, and sick as they are. Assad has to go. Hussein has to go. No, I say that Gaddafi has to go. I say you should all go to hell and rot in hell. So, what else do we have here? Oh, you know those Russians hacked into our election. There was no proof of it, but we'll be really stupid. And again, if you want the facts, you subscribe to the Trends Journal. We just came out with our new edition, and it is getting very high praise. It's a blockbuster. So, what if the United States hacked into elections? Well, guess what? They are. This is, again... Wall Street Journal. Again, this is trends in the news. So we report on the news and tell you the trends. U.S. firms get out the vote in EU elections. Very important elections 
They began on Thursday, will end on Sunday for the EU Parliament. Companies say they are simply supporting the democratic process, but some executives privately voiced concern that a low voter turnout would help anti-EU parties that would seek to roll back European integration, which has greatly benefited multinationals. That's the way they write it. You have firms like 3M Corporation and others putting out ads to get people to get out and vote because they don't want the populist parties to win. Outright interference. Could you imagine if the Russians were doing this? The, the New York slime, oh, I got to be proper, the toilet paper a record, would be having a big issue with this, and it would be all over the cartoon news network that morons and imbeciles called CNN. And then finally, in talking about why you should subscribe to the Trends Journal and Trends in the News and watch our video podcast, you could go on Trend Vision 2020. Look them up. Full page ad here in the Financial Times today. FT Future on News. Trust technology and transformation in an age of upheaval. And you know who they have? You can't make this crap up. You can't make it up. Harry Barron, executive editor of the Washington Post. Oh, yeah, a number one prostitute owned by Amazon. Who else do we got here? Oh, she'll give you the future. Samantha Barry, editor-in-chief of Glamour magazine. Well, that'll put some shine on you. Who else do we have here? Rebecca Bloomstein. Oh, yeah, deputy manager of the New York Times. The toilet paper a record. And Steve Forbes. You can't make it up, Forbes. And BuzzFeed. Buzz this. Yeah. Again, they don't know anything about trends. They don't know the future. They give you yesterday's news tomorrow. Again, your new trends journal's out. It's history before it happens. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.